So this time, I'm going to give you a divergent integral, the integral from 2 to infinity, 1 over x dx. And we will let you know which of these three improper integrals also diverges. And we are just going to do this based on the given information together with the comparison theorem. Because we are using a divergent integral, so we are talking about the second situation here. So the way we are going to do this is, we are going to check these improper integrals. We want to see which of these is greater than or equal to a divergent integral that we already know. Because think about divergent as infinity. If you can show that an improper integral is bigger than or equal to infinity, that means we must be even bigger right here. That means this improper integral has to diverge as well. So that's the strategy. And now let me just run through the check. And I'm going to start with choice C. So I will write down the improper integral that we have, which is from 2 to infinity, 1 over e to the x dx. And for the purpose of using the comparison theorem, if you are using something that's divergent, and you want to check with this one, the only way that we can draw a conclusion is putting down the improper integral right here on the left-hand side, and we check if this is greater than or equal to a divergent. We check if this is greater than or equal to the divergent integral, which is that from 2 to infinity, 1 over x dx. Because if this is true, this is the only situation that we can draw a conclusion based on the comparison theorem. Okay? So now, as we can see, these two integrals are going from 2 to infinity, so I can just write down the functions inside. That means we can just check 1 over e to the x. If this is greater than or equal to 1 over x, well, we are just talking about for x is greater than 2, because that's going from 2 to infinity. And with this being said, you know that 1 over x will be positive, so it's 1 over e to the x. So I can include everything right here as positive. And then I can cross multiply, because everything is positive, so I don't need to switch the inequality symbol. So if I do 1 times x, it's just x, and I maintain the same inequality, but I don't know if this is true or not, and I do e to the x times 1, which is right here, and just ask yourself, is this true? And this should be a false statement, right? You should be able to tell really quickly. Because exponential function, it's bigger than e. I mean, b bigger than x. e to the x is bigger than x when x is greater than equal to 2, OK? But then one way to do it is by looking at the graph. And let's do it real quick. So you can use a graphing calculator real quick, or just, you know, Think about the graph of this real quick. X, it looks like this. It's just a diagonal line. This is how X looks like, Y is equal to X. And then E to the X, well, E to the X, when X is equal to zero, we have E to the zero, which is one. So it starts right here. And then it goes what? It just like grows up real big, like this. This is Y equals to E to the X. And if you use a graphing calculator, you will see that they will never touch each other. Also, this right here will always just keep going up, and this right here just still the 45 degree angle line, right? And as you can see, if you have um, a function that's above the other one, that means e to the x is actually bigger. So I'm just going to say that this right here is a false inequality. That means I cannot draw any conclusion. I don't know if this diverges or not. I cannot draw any conclusion based on the comparison theorem with this improper integral. So I cannot say anything about this improper integral for choice C. All right, and then let's work out choice B to see if it converges or not, or it diverges or not, because the question here is we're focusing on divergence. And if you're using divergent, once again, putting the improper integral and try to show this is bigger than or equal to a, a, a divergent integral that we know. All right, checking uh, choice B. So I'll write down that improper integral from 2 to infinity x over x to a third power plus 1 dx. And we will make this greater than or equal to that 2 to infinity 1 over x dx. Because once again, we are trying to check this with a divergent. Okay? And same business, they are going from 2 to infinity, so I can just check inside. This is x over x to the third power plus 1, and is this greater than or equal to 1 over x? Well, I just care about when x is 
greater than or equal to 2. So everything is once again positive. So I can just cross multiply. So here we have x times x, which is just x squared. And I maintain the same inequality sign, but I don't know if this is true or not. x to the third power plus 1 times 1 is just x to the third power plus 1. And now you are ready to know if this right here is true or not for x is greater than or equal to 2. Once again, this right here is false. Okay, This right here is clearly false. Why? Because you can just pick, let's say, uh, if x is equal to 3, for example, if x is equal to 3, okay? Because you want to make sure if this is true or not when x is greater than equal to 2. You can pick x is equal to 3. And if you plug in 3 right here into x, you get 9. But then is this greater than equal to uh, 3 to a third power is 27 already plus 1, that's even bigger, 28. This is clearly false, right? So, as you can see, x squared is not going to be bigger than x to the third power plus 1. So once again, I cannot draw any conclusion with a comparison theorem for that. Okay, and in fact, these two improper integrals, they both converges. But then, we are just demonstrating the purpose of the comparison theorem. Last one, and once again, this has to be the answer. I always put the answer in the back, uh, at the end. Anyways, I will show you that this indeed, this indeed diverges, diverges, okay? So I would like to put down 2 to infinity, 1 over l1x dx. As long as I can show this right here is greater than or equal to a divergent that we already know, which is 2 to infinity, 1 over x dx, then I can show you that this has to diverge as well. Same business, same interval, right? So I can just check. 1 over ln(x) is this greater than or equal to 1 over x? And we only care about for x is greater than or equal to 2. And once again, this would be positive, that would be positive, so let me include that. And in fact, you can just do the graph right here already. You can graph this, you can graph that. But then on the graphing calculator, 1 over ln(x) and 1 over x is going to be really tiny, so it's hard to see. Let's cross multiply first. That's why I you know, keep, keep cross multiply. Anyways, 1 times x is x. Is this bigger than or equal to 1 times ln(x), which is just ln(x)? Is this true? Let's take a look. So, let me graph x in red for you. So this time the x will be in red, okay? So x is, looks like this, the 45 degree angle line. And then ln x, so we know when x is equal to 1, ln of 1 is equal to 0, and the graph will look like this, and it's just going like this. This is y equals to ln x. Once again, you could have made the graph right here, but it's because it will be really tiny, that's why I want to cross multiply and then graph x compared with ln x. Notice that x, y is equal to x, this graph right here, it's above then the y is equal to ln x. That means this inequality is true. In fact, it's true for all the x values, but then it's of course true for x is greater than equal to 2. If you look at 2 and afterward, the red curve, well, the red line has to be always above the black curve. This is always true. So you see, we check the inequality. This right here is correct. This inequality holds. And we show that this is bigger than a divergent that we know. That means this right here has to diverge as well. Therefore, choice A is the answer. It must diverge as well by using the comparison, comparison theorem with the divergent integral that we already know.